What's up, Saiyan Army? So week three check-in of the Boo to Broly series, Panda, what were your macros for this week? 200 grams of carbs, uh, 50 grams of fat, and 180 grams of protein. All right, so as stated, week two, your macros is really low. You're like starving yourself, really low on carbs. Um, mm -hmm. Week three, I wanted you to get your carbs up. So to help just gauge your metabolism, I know like ever since you went to Japan and you know, you gained a bunch of weight, so we want to kind of see just where your metabolism, metabolism was currently at. So also cardio sessions, how much cardio? Three sessions of 300 calories burned per session. All right, and did you hit it? Yes. All right, so let's look at your check-in. So decent, decent. I mean, you're close. Um, some days you're off by like around 10-ish. Um, I set the goal for my clients to stay with, within five grams, and that may seem like very close and very like strict, but that's because most people will deviate 5 to 10 grams. And if I say 5 to 10 grams, then most, uh, most people, like if I tell Panda stay within 5 to 10 grams, he's going to deviate 15, 15 to 20 grams. So that is why I keep it within 5 grams, just to keep it strict. And really, like if you plan ahead, it's totally easy, right? So this week yeah. you did a lot more planning ahead, right? Yeah, or yeah. a lot of subway. Like yeah, a lot, lot, of subway, lot of subway and a lot of planning ahead. <laughs> but your weight went up this week, which was to ex be expected because you're eating a lot more. Mm -hmm. So. What we saw in the Buddha Broly 1 series is that Panda prefers to diet on a higher fat diet. Uh -huh. Higher fat, lower carbs, you prefer fats. Whereas for me, I like my carbs, so I'll go, I like to go higher carbs, lower fats. Studies show that it makes no difference in terms of dieting. All that matters is caloric deficit. What we changed Panda's macros for this coming week is to 100 carbs, 85 fats, and we're upping the protein to 200. The reason why we kept the protein low at 180 grams even if that's like his lean body mass weight-ish is because um, his gout was kind of flaring up a little bit but that was due to a lot of red meat um, yeah. pandas worked around it we'll talk about that later in the video about how you know your gout's essentially getting a lot better yeah like yeah. a lot better yeah so we'll talk about that later but yeah let's go kill this workout Ten, motherfucker. Before any upper body workout, you always want to warm up first. And this is something you guys see us do. I haven't explained it in a long time. So for any of you new guys or newbies going to the gym, always warm up your upper body. I know I was watching another YouTube video the other day and these guys just went into their workout. Like no warm up, nothing. Um, I'm not sure if they cut it out because, you know, it gets kind of boring. But today, we're going to show you guys. And this is what we do before every upper body warm up. Even if we don't show it in the video, every upper body day, we always warm up our rotator cuffs. Reason being is it's the weakest joint in your upper body. It's the most common injury that I see in the gym pertaining to upper body is shoulders, elbows, your joints for the most part. Shoulders, elbows, wrists. Mostly shoulders though, from my personal experience. So you're gonna start off doing band pull-aparts. I've heard them called like around the world, band arm dislocations or whatever. Pretty much you grab the band, how far or wide you grab is dependent on your mobility. Obviously, the closer you grab, the better your mobility is. If you can use like a PVC pipe or some kind of stick, like a broomstick, that doesn't like bend or anything, even better. So grab it as close as you can, straight back, all the way down to your butt. Notice how I'm trying not to hyperextend my lower back. I'm trying to keep proper posture. So instead of pulling it back like this, like that, I'm trying to pull my rib cage down, keep my chest um, and everything, my posture in line, and pull straight back. See the difference? And we do that about 20 times. From there, there's a little advanced step. I do one arm at a time. So left over right, right over left. And really, I don't count. I just go by feel. Once my rotator cuffs feel warm, then I move on. Next warm up, real simple. Elbow in, rotate out. And even this too, I don't really count. I just kind of go by feel. And again, the goal is just to warm up your rotator cuffs, do both sides. And notice how I'm keeping it nice and smooth. I'm not like jerking it around and stuff. Just, you know, in, out, nice and smooth. Next right here, elbows up, pull it back to a 90 degree angle and back down. Up to a 90 degree angle, back down. So right here, retract, hit that 90 degree angle, pull it back as far back as possible and then back down. Next, space pulls right here. Again, same thing. 
Retract, put it straight back to your ears. Straight back to your ears. And then from there. Wow. Did I hit you? Yeah, dude. Oh, dick. sorry. <laughs> like, you snapped on my, my fucking love handle, jerk. <laughs> Uh, following that, we might do some pull-ups and some push-ups. To so pull-ups is to warm up your back when you're doing like overhead presses. Pretty much any of your upper body stuff, your back will always be uh, stabilizing muscle. Even for the bench press, when you're benching, you use a lot of upper back and lats, you know, to help stabilize the bar as you're benching. And elbows, obviously. For me, I have tricep tendonitis, which is why I use the sleeves, and I always make sure I warm up my elbows properly. How I got tricep tendonitis was years of doing stupid skull crushers. My elbows used to feel inflamed. Back in the day they used to tell us, no pain, no gain. Which was the dumbest fucking advice I ever <laughs> heard. If something doesn't feel right, no matter how much you change your form and everything, and your form is perfect and whatever, then maybe the exercise just isn't for you. I know a ton of people who can't do skull crushers. Majority of you guys watching this video probably will not be able to do skull crushers without feeling some kind of elbow pain. Um, that's just from my personal experience. And if you guys are one of those people, then stay the fuck away from skull crushers. Simple as that. There you go. Stop. Yeah, that's pretty good. No, man, I'm feeling pretty strong right now. Boo, boo! Boo, happy! Boo, so happy! Boo just military pressed a bit of school. Girl, not a dude, cause dudes get a little heavy in eighth grade. 135 pound middle school girl? That's like the largest. That's like size. a full grown okay. medium sized Asian. <laughs> in eighth grade, I was 180 pounds in third grade. Are you serious? No, no, eighth grade, eighth grade, sorry, not third, eighth grade. Oh, I was third. like, holy crap, third grade. <laughs> so this was, I thought this was what a girl actually weighs. Now that I think about it, I was like fucking double, double the weight of a girl for the most of my life. <laughs> So I'm sure in eighth grade girls are like 90 pounds and that's like acceptable. Now if you're 90 pounds, you're a little light, you can't even get blood. All right, cool, that's all. Show us Boo charging up. <laughs> 140 pounds on the bar. Have you done this before? Yeah, not well. Not successfully? Mm -mm. All right, let's hit it. Don't do that, please. <laughs> oh my god. There you go, one. Deep breath. Two. Come on, three. Good. Same thing. Four. Good. Last one. Explode. There you go, bring it down. Oh, that looked light, dude. Yeah, this is not challenging either. What was that? It's not challenging either. Really? Yeah. Is that games? I told you. Is that games? I told you this is why we play my playlist so I can get a PR too. Oh Can't my be someone god. Can't someone to share the PR moments, man. Oh my god. All right, taking some BCAs. We are both fasted, so do some BCAs in there and ready to smash the rest of this workout. Yes, I am. All right, so finally starting my working sets. We have 160 pounds on the bar. Shoulder doesn't feel the greatest today, so I'm just gonna play it safe. Um, I remember I used to always teach Saran because he's a side sleeper and he was having shoulder problems because his big ass would sleep, you know, like 200 plus, 220 pounds on one shoulder. And I thought that was funny until yesterday. <laughs> you know why? I don't typically get the whole bed to myself. So I like flipping Ox King the bed, slept diagonally, and I don't know, somehow I ended up on my shoulder. So the reason we're doing overhead press is because that's how you defeat Frieza with the spirit bombs. Right, Kanda? Yep. Yeah, spirit bombs, um, I think it's the best compound shoulder exercise you can do. You know, works your core, works your upper back, works your lats, works your even upper chest, shoulders, triceps, it's great. And yeah, it just feels like one of the most manly exercises because it's, what's more manly than pushing a weight over the top of your head. So, 160, we're doing a six by six today. And yeah, I'm gonna go from there. So core tight, start right here. Deep breath, explode. <clears throat> Number one problems I see people that do spirit bombs is they're not squeezing their legs. So make sure your legs are locked out. This isn't a push press. If you're doing push press, that's a totally different exercise. It's not a push press, it's a strict overhead press. So squeeze your glutes, squeeze your quads, squeeze your hamstrings. When everything feels locked and engaged, it should feel like you're pushing your feet 
through the ground as you're pressing the bar over your head. That's how it should feel when everything's engaged. So if you don't have that feeling, then squeeze your quads, squeeze your glutes, squeeze your core, squeeze everything as tight as possible. And you'll make those spirit bomb gains. 145 pounds on the bar. Are you ready? No. One, five, focus. <clears throat> How are we going six? No, five. You do fives. Burn rubber in the red lights. Breathe, you keep it out of sight. Flow like a waterfall. Submit to the forces of nature. These habits of mine are a major. Burn rubber in the red lights. If life is a highway. Three, two more. Better hit the ground running. Four. Good. Last one. Damn. That looked easier than your last set. <laughs> nice. Gains unlocked. Dude, awesome dude. How's it feel to finally surpass the dreaded 135 that you're stuck on like forever? Progress is not linear. Like you're gonna keep doing the same, you're gonna keep failing, right? And then one day you're gonna you're gonna hit it. And then one day you're gonna like push through it, and then you're gonna add on five more pounds, and you're gonna hit that too. And then if if this man was in here, I probably would have put it to a 10 and I probably would have tore something. So moderation as well as uh patience. Patient. Starting off our arms workout, we're starting off with ring dips. So what I do is I choose a heavy compound, one of my favorite movements for triceps, and then I pick a heavy compound for biceps. So my heavy compound for triceps, um, you can pick close grip bench press, you can even pick like a V-bar push down, real heavy. You can pick dips, machine dips is what we usually do at the gym. Here, we're doing ring dips. Ring dips, I feel a lot of stretch in your stabilizing muscles, in your rotator cuff, in your anterior delts, and it just feels great. It feels like you're loosened up and it helps strengthen those stabilizing muscles as well. So it hits your muscles in a different way. The primary bicep exercise we're gonna do is hammer curls. Hammer curls is my favorite. You guys want big biceps and forearms, focus on that long head. Hammer curls is the way to go. So I'm trying my best to turn out at the top. I have to hit your abs really hard. Notice I'm keeping my body as stiff as possible, engaging my core, and also just helps the movement. Just trying to feel something. Yeah, Panda wanted to add some weight, but I told him not until he does them properly when he can supinate at the top. How many times do I got to supinate for? Five? Just every rep, yeah. Yeah, don't hurt your wrist. If you feel any pressure on your wrist, then stay away. Breathe it in, let it all go. Keep riding that high hole. Flow like a waterfall. Submit to the forces of nature. We all end up meeting our maker. Finishing up biceps, we're doing incline dumbbell curls. One of the most underrated bicep exercises. I did this as like my primary bicep exercise for the longest time. I love it. I love the extra range of motion that you get on the incline bench. Super saying that with Goku curls. So Goku curls aren't your traditional regular bicep curls with the barbell. What we're doing is we're using our lats as like an arm blaster. So literally I'm spreading my lats out. Spreading my lats, can you see my lats? Mm -hmm. So I'm spreading my lats and then put resting my elbows on top of my lats and using that like an arm blaster. So it's a makeshift arm blaster. Hopefully your lats are big enough. If not, do more pull-ups. Let's go.
All right, Panda, so a lot of people have been asking where well, you got that big scar on your stomach. So I got this scar along with this scar and then this scar. Please um, don't go higher up. There's another scar over there and then this scar when I was, um, when I was hit by a car. Um, the fucking dickhead ran me over with a Buick. Um, How old were you? I think I was like five. This is what happens. Um, parents, watch for, watch out for your kids, especially when they love food and handy pantries right across the street. So for those, those of you guys who don't know what handy pantry is, it's actually like a mini mart. They used to be located right across, uh, diagonally across the street from where I went to high school. When I had, no, 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 elementary school. Okay, um, my brother said he was gonna go to his family's to be, so I thought, oh, great idea, I'm gonna run after him. Parents, be accountable and make sure you know where your kids are at all times because I can tell you, I ruined my parents' day that night that day technically um ran back ran across the street got hit by a car spent like three months in the hospital because i was fucked up um i broke my femur my knee um, they put pins in my femur and my knee to hold it together for it to heal um they had to cut my stomach open to clean out all the bone fragments because i had like internal bleeding um the bone fragments was was from like your shattered your rib cage or yeah wow yeah. And then this this side of my leg was because um, when they hit me as like you know as like a nice forty pound child, um, I flew quite far. So me bouncing off the asphalt gave me a crazy rug burn, which is that road scar, rash. road rash. Yeah, um, got that. It was all over my arm. I mean, pretty rough. So you're lucky to be alive. Yep. I mean, the course of my life, there's many other injuries that has greatly limited my ankle mobility. This is not one of them. I just have now a lot of visible scars, which yeah, YOLO I'm okay with. You um, might have hit your head a few times. No, I did. So my dad told me that um, my head was the size of like an alien because it was, oh. it was swollen. Holy shit. Like my, I broke my head open. I mean, I was, I was pretty fucked up actually. So I'm assuming that you don't scar. have pictures. No. Not that we want to show that. No, it was, I mean, it was, like I was pretty fucked up. Like I remember yeah. having tubes in my throat uh, so I could like breathe and stuff. Yeah. Um, like I had like a tube in my pee hole uh, so I could just pee catheter. freely. Is that a catheter? I don't know what the fuck it is, but I remember pulling that shit. I hurt like no other. Oh my God. Um, one of the more painful things I probably had to do in my life. Not that I remember because um, when you get hurt like that, your, your brain does a great job of hiding it from you. Trauma. I don't remember shit. I don't remember getting hit. I remember them cutting off my clothes thinking like, what the fuck? There's my dick. But I don't care because I got morphine in my body. But <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, it is what it is. But yeah. Story time with Uncle Eric. All right. Good story. I'm glad you're alive. True that. True that. A lot of fun exchanges after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Ugh, I just rubbed up against your... <laughs> your you just got all over your arm. That's so gross. That's awesome. It's all fucking sticky. Don't do it one more time? No, don't touch well, me. You. Put your shirt back on. What, you so... <laughs> oh yeah, never mind. Keep it off. We gotta do it for the thumbnail. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, give it a like. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you guys made it to the end of the video, comment down below. Oh my God, I can't believe he did that. So everyone that's new comes to the video, thanks something crazy happened okay i like that okay. oh my god i can't believe you did that all right and we'll see you guys in the next video much of strength and honor aloha peace easy homes